Hi everyone and welcome back to episode 6 in our item inspection series. In this episode we're going to continue with the UI stuff and we're going to add the inspection screen. So the inspection screen contains a couple of things. First of all it contains the uh, controls for the player to see what buttons do what as well as the item description itself for you to analyze the item and give information from it. So we're going to make a whole separate UI for this. We're going to go and add new widget blueprint and we're going to call this an inspection screen and we're going to add that open it up like so so first of all I'm going to drag a border in and set the anchor to the top right and let's just reposition that to zero alignment wise I'm aligning it in the X by one and that puts it into the top right hand corner of the X value and I can reposition the X by say 50 Oh, minus 50, so, and that'll push it away by minus 50, and then the Y, I can go 50, and it'll knock it down. Um, we're then going to go and use the brush color, a bit the same as what we set up previously, which I stored up here. Close that, and click OK. Right, so with that done, we can now add some text to this, so we're going to go add text. Actually, Let's add a grid, grid panel. And inside the grid panel, we're going to add some text to this grid panel. So the first text is going to say um, E. Uh, we go, yeah. Yeah, we go E, colon. Uh, now we do press E, press E, and we'll add another text to that grid, and we're going to align it with these arrows here to the right, okay, and in this text we're going to say, um, leave inspection, we're then going to drag another text value, into the grid. This time it's going to go down. And it's going to be mouse wheel. Hold on. And go drag another text value. And go down, right. This one is going to be uh, zoom in slash out. And you'll notice what you see what we're doing here. We set up the controls for the uh, the uh, player. So drag another one in. Drag that down. Left click and drag. Colon. And again, it's that grid panel. Move it down. Cross. Rotate. So what this to do, if we click on the grid panel, uh, not grid panel, the border, sorry, and click size the content, you'll see the border will now size and, and expand to the left because the alignment's on the right hand side here, it'll expand that way um, to show the a nice aligned way. Okay, it's a nice way of doing it. Um, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to put a um, horizontally align to the right so they all line up okay and we're just going to put some space in between these so on this one i'm going to go and add the padding on the left b20 i'm going to do that for each of these ones as well 20 and this one 20. on the grid panel itself i'm going to change the padding here to match what we did with the the column uh, the met column, the messages. We go thirty, comma ten. You can see we got a similar sort of layout for it. Okay, uh, and that'll do for this. We don't need any more for that. Next, we're going to do is add the item description box. So I'm going to close that and just put in another border. And this border is again we're going to align it to the top right. Reset position. Like to fully onto the right with the X, and we can position it 
in the wire by let's say 250. In the X, we're going to do minus 50. It's now perfectly line with this as well. Brush color, we can use the same one we've stored. So, and in here, we're going to drag a, a scroll box, a scroll panel, sorry. Uh, scroll box, there we go. And drag that in. Now, the scroll box is going to control all the text that's inside the widget, okay? Um, but I want mine to be perfectly in shape with this one here. So I'm going to go into my border for this and I'm going to change the size in the EX to match this. Okay. And let's go as close as possible anyway. Oh, wrong one. Let's go 580. Ooh, 580. There we go. And the Y, we're going to go 500. There you go. And there's our description box. And the scroll box will fill the whole entire thing. Okay. Now, the scroll box is going to contain some just text. So I'm going to drag some text into it. And that would be the item description being revealed. Okay. And the scroll box we're going to make automatically scroll on its contents, okay? Um, so to do that, we're going to go into our graph and take a look at what we've got here. So I'm just going to remove what we've got currently there, so I've got a clean slate, so I know exactly what I'm looking at. So for this to work, we need to bring in some variables. Now the variables are going to be, our, first of all, our item description, because we need to change the text. So we go item description text and the scroll box will go call it scroll box again tick is variable and that will do uh, we're also going to add a new variable to this one called item description and that will be some text that will make editable and expose on spawn and click compile Okay, so with this done, we can go and add a construct event. Now, the first thing on construct is going to change the item description text to match our item description. So get the text and then set text and assign your item description to that. Compile. So to do the scrolling, we're going to add a tick event. And we're going to drag the scroll box out from the variable list. And then from there, we're going to go set scroll offset. And the value from this offset is going to be the current scroll offset. Let's actually drag that out. Be useful. So get scroll offset. And we're going to simply just add a float to it and let's add uh let's add just leave it as one maybe for now but we need to do a bit more than that nope okay we'll leave it as that i think okay so this will just over tick just scroll that text however what i want it to do is i want it to do two things i want it to delay the start of it and when it reaches the end, I want it to restart back to the beginning. So let's have a look at how that works. We're going to make a new custom event called start scroll. This is going to go into a gate. And specifically, that will open the gate. The tick will be the enter. And the exit will go into our set scroll offset. And what the gate does, when the start scroll event is called, this will open it up and the tick will be allowed to go through and flow through it and do this code. So this won't basically tick at all until start scroll is being called and is happy with it. Okay. Now, once the gate is open, it is open. 
we need to take them to close when we stop scrolling. Now to detect whether we've got stopped scrolling and to make sure that we know when we reach the end of the scroll, what we can do is normalize the value between the current scroll offset and the maximum scroll. So to get a maximum scroll, from this scroll set scroll, sorry, get scroll box, we can get scroll offset of end. And that gives you the maximum value scroll offset will be to reach the end of the scroll. And then we're going to normalize the float. So we go normalize to range. And this scroll offset to, of end will go into the max. And the value itself will come from the uh, this new one here, the plus. So go there, like so. So normalizing basically means it will take the value and look at whereabouts it sits between zero and the max and return it as a normalized value, being the value between zero and one. We can then check whether or not this is greater than or equal to one i.e the end we put that into a condition for a branch and then we can make a stop scroll custom event and that's going to close i can now call that stop scroll at the end so when start scroll occurs, it will open up the gate, tick will go through, scroll the thing, when it reaches the end, it will take to stop the scroll and close the gate. Now, when we do call stop scroll, we also want to tell it to reset the scroll offset after a certain amount of time. So on the set scroll, oh sorry, let's first of all start off the scroll. So on event construct, we're gonna set timer by event. And the event is going to be our start scroll. Hook up there. We'll do it after two seconds. So after two seconds, start scroll will occur. After those two seconds, it will start scrolling and it will reach the end and turning it to stop the scroll, which will stop here. So what I'm going to do is make stop scroll also restart the start scroll after two seconds. So again, we're going to do a set timer by event. In the event we can drag up to here we'll just move that along like so and set the time to be two seconds so after two seconds start scroll will occur and with start scroll we're going to set the scroll box so we're going to get scroll box and set the scroll offset to be zero send it back to the start now on the stop scroll that means after two seconds that will occur and then it will do the set scroll offset okay so hit compile and it will just go around the loop let's see how that looks in the game but first we need to add it to the actual game so to add it to the actual game when we go to the item parent and we go to the inspect start inspect before we do the input stuff here, I'm going to go ahead and create a widget. I'm gonna go ahead and create the widget uh, inspection screen. See, it's asking for an item description now. That's because we exposed it on spawn. So I can just drag my item description into that. The return value then, I'm going to promote to a variable. Inspection UI. And then add that to viewport. And that will then go to a disable input like so. Now, it's not just enough to add it to the screen, we also need to hide the current HUD. So, on the start inspect, we're gonna, before we do all this, we're gonna get the player, get HUD, and then set the visibility of the HUD to be hidden. It 
compile and let's see how that looks push play pick up an item push e to interact so here i've got the inspection screen actually it would help if i added some uh, text to my scroll box so i'm going to item parent click on the item description and i'm just going to go and grab some lorem epsom uh, gibberish from the internet be right back okay i'm back and i've just copied it from the internet so Control v and there's my lorem ipsum gibberish compile play and let's have a look how that works ah would help if i actually told it to wrap at the moment it's not wrapping uh, so go to ui go to the inspection screen click on the text and what we can do is we can take it to auto wrap or wrap text at it's better to type in the actual value that way you won't see any weird stutter so our scroll box or so it's border is of size 580 so i'm going to make my wrap at uh, we'll go 580 minus where is it i'm going blind there it is 580 minus 30 for each side so that'd be 550 and then 520 so type in 520 because i'm having 30 either side padding let's add that padding like so Hit compile and let's now test that out so there is our scroll box and you can see it's scrolling after two seconds and let's see what happens when it reaches the end This is all two second wait and then it restarted. Now do this, that would be perfect. And now I've got full control, I can zoom in, out, I can then leave inspection. And when I leave inspection, I now need to tell it to basically do the inverse, hide the, or get rid of the leave inspe uh, the inspection screen and remake the HUD visible. So go back to your item parent and go to leave inspect. Uh, stop inspect there it is and at the end of this we're going to go and get our inspection ui variable and we're going to go remove from parent we are then going to get the player characters variable out get hud and change the visibility of this to be visible play let's have a look now i can inspect it it will scroll i can then leave inspection and it returns back to the gameplay and there we go nezo inspection ui so that'll do us for this episode next episode will be the last episode and in that episode i'm going to show you a working example of how you make it work with say a door and a key so join us in the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash raylady. Just one dollar will get access to that video plus many, many others. Big shout out and thank you to all of my patrons for their support as well as all my YouTube members as well. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.